Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to this presentation today. I'm really excited to be sharing some really valuable information with you. Uh, let me just double check here in the chat, make sure everything is going well. And we're going to get started right on this thing and jump right in and give you a lot of amazing value because I, I promise you this information in this presentation is really going to be the thing that most of us, if not all of us musicians and bands and artists need to kind of take heed and hear and you know get control of if we want to get control of our careers starting now going into the next year and beyond so we're going to go ahead and get started let me just double check here and make sure everything is working okay and that you guys can hear me okay looks like we're going good so we are going to jump right in on this give me one second yeah there we go Okay, awesome. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. So let's get started. So welcome to this presentation on your roadmap to musical success in the creator economy. Why you need to pivot starting right now. What we're gonna be discussing in this presentation is we're gonna start by giving an overview of the state of the music industry and everything that's happening in the music industry and why that's important. And then we're gonna jump into talking about what's working for musicians and what's not working for musicians and artists and bands. And that's where we'll jump into talking about the creator economy and why that is the ticket to your success and what you need to do to grow as a musician, artist, a band. And then we'll talk about why you need to pivot to make more money, why you need to be pivoting to this creator economy thing that we're talking about. And then we'll give an amazing opportunity for you to grow. And then at the end, we'll do a little bit of Q and A. So if you have any questions that you may have about any of the things that we talk about or really anything, you can just jump in in the chat and ask. So we'll do a little bit of Q&A as well. Now, why is this presentation important and what does it mean for you as a musician, artist, a band? Well, the creator economy is the quickest and easiest way to succeed in the music industry right now. It really is. This is the thing that a lot of people need to understand. The older methods of success and the way that musicians and artists and bands obtain success is, you know, basically gone. It's different. It's of old. It's outdated and it is no longer working. So what we have to do is adopt new methods and and strategies for us to be able to make money that are consistent with what the times are. Right. We all know musicians and artists and bands who have like just fallen by the wayside, so to speak, because they've kind of just been outdated. They may have been great in their time, even musically speaking, like they may have been really good on their instrument or really great on their voice or whatever. And then they stopped learning and growing. And then what happened? They just kind of became like has beens. Right. So it was just like, you know, they didn't adopt any sort of new methods or strategies or anything to sort of stay consistent with the time. So that would help them stay afloat and learning and growing. And that's why this is important to you because that could be you literally we're in a time now where, where they say kind of time is sort of moving fast, so to speak. Of course, it's really the time is always moved at the same pace, but what's happening is there's so much going on. People are so busy. People have so much to do that there's one thing happening after the next. So change is happening really fast. That's what they really mean by time is moving fast. Change is happening, happening really quickly with, you know, AI coming in just, you know, earlier this year or not even a year ago, we didn't even have this sort of AI technology that we have now. Now we live in a society where AI is basically the thing that everybody uses in one form or fashion, right? So like just rapid changes like that in our society is why this is important, because the same sort of changes are happening in the music industry. Right. You know, if we had been having this conversation five, six years ago, I would have been talking about something different as, you know, one of the ways or most viable ways for musicians to be successful. Right. But now it's completely different. So that's why this is important and why you need to be, 
you know, really changing with the times. Now, also, the music industry is really overcrowded. There are more bands and musicians today than ever before, and most of them are competing for the same gigs. Now, you know this to be true, right? You know a lot of these same sort of gigs that everybody are trying to get, like it's the same stuff, it's the same like clubs and bars and restaurants that most bands are trying to get. And here's the thing about it. Most of them don't even pay that much, right? Most of them are like 50, 75, 60, $100 gigs and stuff at most. And people are vying for these types of gigs. And we'll get into that a little bit, but just think about the math of this. I've, I've done the math on this in my head a, a hundred times before. So let's just say you get a, a standing gig where you're going to be gigging every Friday and Saturday night at this, I don't know, bar or restaurant, right? And they're going to pay you a hundred bucks each night. So 200 bucks a week that you'll be making from gigging. Now, you know, for some people that's okay. That's not bad. And it's just even generally not bad, but just think about this. So 200 bucks a week, every weekend for an entire year. So you got 52 weeks in a year, right? So basically you have 200 times 52. So we'll do the lesser two times 52, which is 104, right? So basically you have about $10,000 that you'll make $10,400 that you'll make. I think I'm doing that math, right? You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but $10,400 for an entire year. And that's with you gigging every weekend on a Friday and Saturday night doing a hundred dollar gig. Now, also, let me be clear about this. You also have to factor in the, or subtract the amount of money that you're going to use for like gas and you know, rehearsals and stuff that you'll have to do to keep up with that, those particular gigs. You know, if you're solo, you're probably going to have to spend time practicing and all of that. If you're with a band, you're going to have to spend time going back and forth to rehearsals and all of that for these particular gigs. You're going to have to spend time learning songs, all of that. You're going to have to spend money buying food, probably back and forth when you're going, you know, to and from the gigs and to and from rehearsals. So you subtract that let's just put a round figure on it. Let's just say at minimum, I don't know, 2000 bucks a year on gas and food and all of that, that you would buy going back and forth to the gig. Now that's just the minimum amount, right? So now you're not at 10,400 anymore. You're at 8,400. So you've only made $8,400 per year for a gig that you're doing a couple of times a week. And why that's important to think about is because there is musicians out here and I know some of them personally myself because I coach a lot of them musicians out here doing 10, $15,000 in a single weekend in a single gig. And no, I'm not talking about musicians and artists that are signed to labels that have, you know, these massive backings and stuff from all of these promotion companies and all of that kind of stuff. I'm talking about what I would call average people like myself, like you and me, the people who are here on this presentation that are making a killing doing that kind of thing. But the reason that's important is because again, the music industry is really overcrowded. So again, you have all of these musicians and artists and bands that are out here vying for these same types of gigs, yet you have other musicians who are out here just like absolutely killing it and making 15, 20 grand in a weekend. I'm, I'm very serious about that. That's not some thing I'm coming up with off the top of my head. I'm really serious about that. I know that to be true for a fact that there are a lot of musicians and many musicians and artists and bands that are doing that kind of those kind of numbers. So it's really easy and I'm going to show you how they're doing it in this presentation. So that's one thing to understand about the music industry as it is now. It's really overcrowded. And also there is extremely high competition. So two really big challenges that are facing established bands and musicians and artists today is that fresh and new bands that are starting out may be charging less. And that makes it really difficult for established bands and musicians to find work. 
And as I stated, musicians are vying to release their popular music or their music on popular platforms like Spotify, which already has over 551 million listeners. Now, hear me when I say this, this is like extremely important. You have to understand what's happening in the music industry. This this whole thing, the competition is really fierce and it's not a competition based on talent. It's not like the competition that you're kind of going up against people or is a thing that is based on bands and musicians that are better than you. Of course, there's an element of that. That's always going to be the case. You know, the, the people who have the better product, so to speak, are always going to be probably more in demand, or at least the people who are have the perceived better product are going to be more in demand. And that's a whole different conversation, but it's really understand that our, our, really important to understand that the competition is not based on talent alone. Actually, that's way down the list. The competition is based on what I just mentioned, not only perceived value, but attention. This is one of the things that I've been talking a lot about and a lot of the coaching programs and stuff that I've done and a lot of talks and a lot of podcasts and all of this kind of stuff that I've been on. This is something that's really important. So please understand what I'm about to tell you. What is happening right now is the competition is based on really one word, and that is attention. Starting now, actually, it's already started and going into 2024, the new year and beyond. The thing is going to be attention. And this is where the creator economy is going to come in. I'm going to get into that in a minute. But attention is the thing. The The people who can garner the most attention or the bands and artists that can garner the most attention are the ones that are going to win. Plain and simple put, simply put, that's just how it's going to be. And here's the thing, what I mean by attention, so that you're clear on this. We have a lot going on in our society. People are... I I talked about this a little bit while ago, but people are just extremely busy. This is what I meant by like change is happening really fast, but people are extremely busy. They're working and they're, you know, they have a lot going on and they're all of these products are basically vying for attention. So not only this is one of the things that I talk about, and this is important. So not only are bands and musicians and artists competing with other bands for attention, we're competing with stuff like Netflix, Disney Plus, you know, Max, Peacock, all of all of the streaming networks, all of these people are vying for our attention. And there's only so much attention to go around. That's that's something that's really important to understand, because when you understand that, that becomes sort of the basis and the crux of all of your marketing and what you're going to be doing on social media and all of that kind of stuff, which is a little bit outside of the scope of this presentation, but I really wanted to throw that in there because it's really important. The, the attention thing is like, that's going to be the gold mine. The, the bands and artists and musicians that can garner the most attention, you know, skillfully. And of course, morally and ethically, I'm not talking about any shady practices or anything like that, but the musicians and bands and artists that can do that, are the ones that are going to succeed. And that that's already proven to be true. I'm going to show you a little bit more of that. So the thing to understand here is that there's high competition in the music industry right now. You know, you have a lot of musicians and artists of bands or new musicians, artists and bands out there that, you know, are coming into the fold, starting bands or getting into this thing and they aren't really charging much. And, you know, understandably so they feel like they're new, so they don't, they shouldn't be charging anything. But what happens is that drives the market down. So when a club or something can go to a band that only charges, oh, you got six people in your band, you only want 200 bucks for, for, uh, for this four hour gig and you sound halfway decent. And the club is like, well, I'm going to get them instead of getting this established band that's going to charge me, you know, $5,000 to play this same gig. You know, it's a, it's a really no brainer situation for the clubs and the venues that are want bands like that. Right. So you have to understand that that's the competition. And the thing is about attention. And not only that, one important thing to understand about this is this whole Spotify revolution. And, you know, a lot of musicians and artists and bands are trying to release their music on Spotify and on streaming networks and all of that kind of stuff. And it is just not doing well for the majority of, you know, 
people who are going to us, what I would call, again, average musicians and artists and bands who are not like signed to labels and stuff like that and don't have these massive promotional things behind us. Right. People like us that are trying to get on these platforms are just not doing well at all. And it's because the competition is so high. As you see here, Spotify has over 551 million listeners. Now, here's the important thing to understand about that. It's not just the artists and musicians and bands that are on there that are like us. It's the Taylor Swift's, the Beyonce's, you know, those type of people who are going to garner the most attention on these platforms, all of the attention and all of the streams are going to those types of people. And again, it's only so much of it to go around. So when you try to release your new music on something like Spotify, stuff that nobody's ever heard before, that's, you know, you, you may have some really good music. You may have some really good original stuff, but nobody really heard it, heard it before. You don't have any sort of social media following that can go in there and back you and help you get, you know, the hundreds of thousands of streams that you need or that you would need to make any sort of significant money. You're just kind of like wasting your time. I mean, you'll, you'll do okay. You'll make some pennies here and there. And when I say pennies, I'm not talking about literal, literally pennies. In some cases it is literally pennies, but I mean, you'll make, if you, if you push it right, you can do well, you can make a hundred bucks or so, you know, in a week or in a month or something like that. So it's not like it's just, you know, crazy to try to go out for Spotify. It's just that this is not the way that musicians and bands and artists are succeeding and making the types of money that I mentioned earlier, these $10,000 a weekend gigs and, you know, really literally sitting at home doing nothing and have money coming into your account. Right. So that's one of the important things to understand about this, you know, this music industry that we're in right now. Now, also, there has been a huge decline in live performances. You know, live performances were greatly affected by the pandemic. And even before before the pandemic, the industry was already declining in terms of like live music performances. And then when the pandemic hit, you know, it just really went down. And it's really unclear if the industry will ever fully recover in terms of like live performances and bands as they were. So the thing that's important to understand here is that, you know, we can't really be depending on these live performances anymore. And even to the extent where, you know, some of, I don't want to paint a you know, picture that's not true. It's not like the live performance industry for a lot of us bands and musicians have just gone aside and there's no live performances out there. That's not the case. There's, there's still lots of gigs and, you know, people hiring at clubs and bars and restaurants and all of this kind of stuff. There's still plenty of that stuff out there. It's just that it's on a, on a decline. It's not declining super rapidly. Like I said, the pandemic did speed it up, but it's not just like going from like a hundred to like zero in overnight. That's not what I'm saying. I want to, don't want to paint this like bleak picture, but the decline is going down. A lot of the uh, restaurants and just venues period that hire bands, they have started to understand that things like getting a DJ may be more economical for them. So you see a lot of more, a lot more DJs and stuff like that handling parties, whether, whereas a band you'd be paying a band five or $10,000 for, you know, this really high paying gig, you could get a DJ for half that. So you know, a lot of people are understanding that. And we've always been in competition with DJs anyway. But like I say, even with that phenomenon in place, just that that sort of slow decline is happening. And it's really gotten to the point to where, as I'm stating here, you can't really just depend on trying to make your living as a musician through these live performances. If you do not have like, again, these large followings behind you and large promotional things behind you where, you know, you can get these types of gigs consistently on a, on a consistent basis enough to support yourself and support your family by the equipment you want and all of that. So this is something that's really important to understand about this music industry that we're in. It's on a decline. This, the, the live performances part of it is on a decline. So 
again, the thing to get here is that this is just not something that we can depend on. Now, also, there has been a huge decrease in band participation. So maintaining a band has become increasingly difficult, especially in the past five years or so. And again, this sped up during like the pandemic. Musicians are now playing with multiple bands and pursuing solo careers. And this scenario makes it harder to to achieve success as a band. And what this means is, and I, I know a lot of us may not be, this is, and this will speak to the point that I'm making here. I know a lot of us may not even be in like one band or trying to do the band thing at all. And we're just trying to do the solo thing. But here's the problem. What happens is it's always been the case that, you know, a unit, a band unit has been, or it has been easier for a band unit to sort of get into this success thing than it is for an individual, especially in this new age. And I'm not talking about, you know, 30, 40 years ago in this new age, when you have a lot of people working together, not necessarily. And when I say band, I don't necessarily just mean a group of people that are playing together. What I mean more specifically is that you have a group of people that are playing together and you have a group of people that are working towards a specific goal or specific goals, right? So you have six people in a band. Everybody has a different job. You have a promotional person. You have a person that books the gigs. You have a person that handles the social media and all of that. And when you have a team of people doing that kind of stuff, you're more likely to succeed because you have more people working on, you know, the different aspects of success. So now we don't really have that anymore. We don't have these teams. We don't have these bands anymore that are working together to, you know, sort of get to a, a common goal. You know, most of the musicians, even that I know nowadays are playing with several different bands because one, they're great musicians and you know, they're in demand and a lot of bands want them. And there's for them, the musicians themselves, there's just lots more money to be made. So they say, Oh, I'm not just going to commit to one band. I'm going to go with multiple bands. So you can't really fault anybody for that. But what I'm saying is that what this has caused is a situation where, again, you don't have that team of people where you don't have this, you know, this particular thing where everybody is working together for one specific goal. And that is causing a lot of people to not get to the success that they want. So you have instead a solo musician trying to go at it alone, trying to do everything themselves, trying to, you know, do all of the marketing, trying to do all of the booking, trying to do book, you know, get all of the gigs, trying to look for gigs, all of this kind of stuff. You have a single person doing they're trying to the single person trying to release all of the music on social media and on Spotify and on streaming and all of that. One person competing against all of the other musicians out there and, you know, competing in this attention market that I discussed earlier. So it just makes it a little bit more difficult when you have that sort of phenomenon in place. It's not again, it's not a bad thing. Don't hear me say saying that it's not like this horrible thing to be a solo musician and to go at it alone. That's not what I'm saying. It's just that it makes it more difficult in this society that we're in today, where a lot of the success comes through things like collaboration. So again, that's really something important to understand about this music industry that we're in, that the decrease in band and group and team participation is down. It's on a decline as well. Now, also, this is a big thing. Pay isn't significantly increasing. Venues have not increased their comp their compensation for bands, artists and musicians. Meanwhile, the cost of living continues to rise and things like gear and all of that. The prices on those things have skyrocketed. And these factors combined make it increasingly difficult to successfully to successfully pursue music full time. This is huge. This is the hugest thing. Like, so the cost, we all know this, the cost of living is going up. Like, it's so funny. I went to like a fast food place the other day. I think it was like Burger King. This was one day last week, actually. And I hadn't been in, in a while. So I was like, oh, let me just try Burger King. I, something I hadn't been to in a long time. 
went to and ordered like a Whopper with cheese meal or something like I think that's what I got. Like just the, whatever the number one is, it's like the Whopper with cheese and, you know, the burger fully loaded and all of that kind of stuff with just like fries in a drink, right? Me- medium fries and medium drink. It was like $14 and 50 cents. I literally, when they told me the price, I was like, what the hell is like, what, the, <laughs> like really $14 and 50 cents. I mean, I remember the price of that being like eight bucks, seven bucks, eight bucks, nine bucks. And that's like double that. And I'm, I'm not talking about like something like when I was a kid, I'm talking about just like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago where that's what the prices were. So you're talking about in a short period of time, you know, prices have doubled. You know, there's a going joke on social media about the price of eggs and how, you know, how the price of eggs has gone up and all of that kind of stuff. So, but the point is the cost of living is increasing and it's significantly going up while the prices that bands and musicians and artists are getting paid are not even necessarily staying the same. Some of it is staying the same, but some of it is going down since the pandemic, right? Again, since this phenomenon that a lot of clubs and artists, a lot of clubs and restaurants and venues that pay bands normally have understood or have tried to finagle their way around paying musicians and stuff and more money and all of that. So you have basically this thing going on, right? Now, why that's as important is because if this continues to happen, which we have no reason to think that it's not going to continue happening, of course, the, the market will cool and inflation and stuff will probably slow at some point. But by then, it still will be to the point to where this discrepancy is right here. So now, you know, that situation I mentioned earlier where you have, you know, these two gigs per weekend, you know, two hundred dollars a week for every weekend for a year and you're making that $10,400. Now, even if you're making that 10, I think we rounded it down once you factor in gas, all of that to 8,400. Now that 8,400 that you would have made, or that would have been the amount that you would have been making five or six years ago in today's economy, that's not going to even get as far. It's not going to get as far at all. You'll probably Again, since prices on things are pretty much doubling, like gas and all of that, the price of houses and interest rates and all of that stuff is going up. That little measly eight thousand dollars isn't going to get you anything. So this is something that is really, really important to understand that this is the overview of the the industry, the music industry that we're in. This thing is happening where there's these big discrepancies that are you know, basically causing musicians and artists and bands to not be successful. So that is that is the overview of the music industry. So now with understanding all of that, this poses a really big question. With all of this stuff that's going on in the music industry and all of the vying for attention and the pay not significantly increasing in all of this kind of stuff. How is it that some musicians, bands and artists are out here killing it and being crazy, crazy successful? And this is where we'll jump into talking about what's working for musicians and artists and bands and how they're being successful and killing it. And the question really becomes, how do you start making money and gaining notoriety and respect for your talent? Well, my friends, this is where the creator economy come in, comes in. This is the answer. It really is. The creator economy is the answer. So the music industry of today has undergone significant changes compared to the past. This is something that we just discussed. Like, it's not like it was even, you know, if I had been having this conversation like five years ago, I would have been telling people, yeah, the music industry is not like it was 15 or 20 years ago. But now I can literally say that, hey, the music industry is not like it was just five years ago. So outdated methods of achieving success in the music industry are still being employed by many, many musicians, despite their ineffectiveness. And that's what we kind of just alluded to. But the modern music industry emphasizes the importance of creating, engaging, inspiring and connecting with your 
audience. And the key here is to develop a community of supporters and enthuse enthusiasts. Please understand this. This is this is the crux of what this creator economy is. And I'm going to show you how all of this works. And this is where you're going to get really some real massive value in all of this. Um, but what's happening is the, the starkest difference between the again, the way musicians and artists and bands were being successful, say, five years ago and even 20, 25 years ago or whatever is one of the main ways that they were doing that, they would try to get signed to labels, they would get a backing, you know, try to get some support, get sponsorships from people and all of that kind of stuff to give them some money to put into promotion and promoting their music and all of that kind of stuff, get them in front of some crowds, get them in front of record labels and all of that kind of stuff, you know, through a purely almost like a physical way of doing that. Now, that way has morphed into something else. It's morphed into this thing to where some of the things are still happening like that is just happening in a different way. Right. So yes, you still have to get in front of people, but now the way you get in front of people is through social media. I'm going to give you some examples of this in a minute. So you'll see what I'm talking about, but a lot of these musicians and bands are out here killing it, literally just sitting at home in their rooms, playing their, instrument or singing or whatever and creating content, turning the camera on, turning their microphone on and recording themselves, uploading it to social media and making a killing. Don't believe me. Let me show you. <laughs> Let me show you how this is working. Right. Let me go over here to some of the uh, things that are happening. So let me show you a couple of these channels that I follow really quickly so you can see what's happening. So this creator here, this guy has if you see here, 606, what is it? 611,000 followers on, this is YouTube. And if you go down here to his videos, you'll see the kind of stuff that he's doing. You see, he this is, I believe, he's doing some of his original stuff on here, but he does cover songs here, this particular song here. He's literally sitting up in his home or wherever he's sitting up with a mic, maybe another person in his guitar singing, and creating content and making money. Now, the reason that his follower account is important is because what you have to understand about social media is that this kind of means money. This means ads. So YouTube has, I don't know if you're familiar with that. We can get into talking about that a little bit if you're not, but YouTube has AdSense. So as you watch his videos and ads play on there, they make money for him. So literally he goes to sleep at night, wakes up with money in his bank, bank account. See how that's working? That's one. Here's another one that I put up for you. This is another artist I follow. She's wonderful. I believe she's from the UK. 696,000 subscribers. Killing it. Let's go to her videos. Out here killing it. See? Guitar. She sets her guitar up, sings, makes money. Social media. The creator economy. You can scroll down here and see some of the... Sometimes she just gets on and talks about stuff and all of this kind of stuff, but she releases not only cover songs, but her original music as well. Goes to sleep at night, wakes up with money in her bank account, by the way, which is a lot more than the $200 that you, $200 that you would make from a hundred dollar gig twice a week. I'll just throw that out there. Here's another one. Another artist that I follow, but I just, Realize that all of these are guitar players, by the way. And this is funny. I didn't even really mean to that. I, I follow a lot more people. I just kind of picked these three off the top of my head. 278,000 subscribers on YouTube. Same thing here. Go to the videos. Doing cover songs. Setting up a guitar at home. Turning the camera on. Recording. Uploading it. Get a huge following. Making money. See that? Look at the videos. See how that's working? all of these are great artists, by the way, really great artists. And if you think this is just YouTube, check this out. Let's go over to Instagram. Another artist that I follow here, 154,000 followers there. From this, this artist's social media, you see this, where her, this performance says she's performing at the Apollo, just from social media. How many of you guys have had an Apollo gig that somebody's, Hey, you want to come play here for 
you know, $10,000 next weekend. How many of the, how many of you have, have that had that, right? There's just something that's unheard of. But you get this kind of stuff. But look at the videos. Setting up a microphone, setting up a camera, just singing. See that? Of course, you got pictures and stuff here, too. Uh, and as with everybody on Instagram, of course, you post pictures and all of that, too. But microphone and guitar. Setting up that singing, making a killing. See how this working? Let me go to another one. This one, this one is mine. I'll just show you some of the same things. On oh, mine, 112,000 followers on Instagram. All I do is the same thing. I'm performing. I'm doing a lot of cover songs on here. You see the piano. Of course, I got a couple of pictures there and all of that kind of stuff. Performance, 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 performance. You get this kind of following, you make a killing. It's This is the way, guys, I'm trying to show you this is what it is. If you think it's just Instagram and YouTube, check this out. TikTok. This artist that I follow, this is she's a really amazing artist. Uh, she's a harpist that plays the harp and does like cover songs on harp. This, I mean, she's just crazy good. TikTok. Look at that. 303,000 followers, right? TikTok. This is... They're doing it. We're everybody's out here doing it. This is what I'm trying to show you. Like this creator economy thing is huge and it represents like sort of the easiest way for a lot of us musicians and artists and bands to become successful really virtually overnight. And I want to be careful about that term overnight. I'm literally not saying like it's going to happen. There's still some work that has to be done and it still can be difficult to, to make this kind of stuff happen. You know, if it was just like really easy, everybody would be out there making a million dollars. So I'm not saying that I'm saying that comparatively speaking or relatively speaking from, you know, five, 10, 15 years ago, what you had to do to be successful. This is like 10 times easier and 10 times quicker and faster. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's check out some stats here about the creator economy. Just look at this. The creator economy is worth over $104 billion. That is billion with a B. Get this, my friends. Get this next sentence. Look at this. The creator economy is expected to double. <clears throat> Excuse me. Double. This is, this is just a few years away. This is just a few years away. What this means is that not only these artists and stuff that I just pointed to that are doing this, that the the amount that's in there is going to double. That means there's success, there's money, there's followings to go around for all of us. You really got to sink this in. This really has to sink in for you. This is something that is really important. Understanding this. <clears throat> this is the biggest that this is expected to double. So two hundred and eight million billion dollars. I'm sorry. That's billion with the B within the next few years. Ain't that crazy? So all of this is going to double. So the 207 million content creators, 200 million active content users, all of this kind of stuff. And this is where this whole attention thing that I talked about earlier is going to come in. This is why this is going to be important. And I'm going to show you how this works and how you can be successful in this. But it's really under, really important to understand this sort of thing with the creator economy. So let me go back over here to my notes here. And like I said, the key here is to develop a community of supporters, enthusiasts, enthusiasts. This is the key to like winning in this economy, right? So let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about building a strong community. How do you do that? Well, the contemporary equivalent of a record contract, the record contracts of old, or being signed to a label is having a fan base that supports you as an artist. Now, a really good resource for talking about this is the Kevin Kelly's 1000 true fans theory. It's an excellent guide to achieving this. So just really briefly, the 1000 true fans is a, is an article that this person, Kevin Kelly wrote and has become really popular because it has ranked to be true. 
He kind of wrote it actually before it's time, like right at the beginning stages of social media and all of this kind of stuff where this was happening. And basically what he proposed is most people for most artists and musicians and bands, you really only need, I just gave these huge numbers on these social media platforms, including mine and all of that. But most musicians and artists and bands only really need 1000 what he calls true fans. Now, let me just give you the numbers on that really quickly and show you how that works. So if you have, say, 1000 followers on, I don't know, YouTube, let's say YouTube, and they're really true fans. Well, let me actually do another figure. Let's say you have, let's say you have more than that. Let's say you have 5000. But out of that 5000, you have only 1000 of them that are really, really true fans, really true supporters of what you do. And what I mean by true fans is that they're going to support you and whatever you do they're going to support your music when you put it out they're going to follow what you do they're going to like all of your content if you release a cd they're going to buy it they're going to be the first people in line to buy it they're going to be the first people in line to buy your merch your t-shirts and all of this kind of stuff right if you have a thousand of those people it's really easy to be successful and make a living make a full-time living as a musician artist a band so Again, let's just say you had you put out a CD. You remember that number, that figure I did earlier about the to keep that thing in mind that that whole two gigs per week for, you know, a whole year and you making ten thousand four hundred dollars and rounding it down to about eight thousand four hundred because of everything you have to do. If you have one thousand true fans and you put out a CD and you sell that CD for ten thousand dollars, just one CD per year. Not only that, let's let's do a single or an EP, let's just say an EP of like three songs. You sell that EP of three songs for 10, 10 bucks once a year to want your 1000 fans doing the math yet, $10,000. You haven't gone to any gigs or set up any equipment to play at clubs and all of this kind of stuff to make your money. You hadn't, you know, wasted the gas and all of this kind of stuff, food. All of you done, you spent some money, of course, trying to do the CD, which a lot of people are doing themselves now because everybody has a, you know, a laptop and an interface or, you know, a studio that they can record stuff with. Right. So the cost, the upfront cost is really, really, really small. Right. So you have this phenomenon where you have this, these 1000 true fans that are supporting you like that. That's just one EP. Let's say you did two and then you did two EPs and then you release some t-shirts, some merch, you know, some caps of some sweatshirts or whatever you sold those two EPs, $10 a piece. And I'm just giving you the $10 a piece. When you got t that many true fans, you could sell your CDs at 25 bucks. If you want to, you really could. I've, I've know that for a fact I've done it. So we're just doing this on the low end. So 10, one CD or one EP, $10,000 Two, you got $20,000. You release some merch or whatever, depending on how you do that, you could do, I don't know, five or $6,000 a year for very minimal effort up front. So you, you have this situation where you could literally do a, a couple CDs, a couple ET EPs per year or, or whole CDs or whatever, and some merch. And you could be making upwards of 25, $30,000 really easily with no effort. Not only that, keep this in mind. So these artists and bands and that I showed you on social media just now, you're also going to be making money on the back end because when you have that many followers and subscribers and all of that kind of stuff that are watching your content or views of people that are watching your content, especially on YouTube, YouTube pays you for that. So you get what's called AdSense from your videos. So literally you're just, you've making, making videos and stuff. You put them out online, the creator economy, and you got money coming in from having the following. They buy all of your stuff, the 1000 true fans, they're buying all of your stuff. Plus YouTube or these other social media platforms are sending you money for your ads. This is, this is the, I just gave you the blueprint. That is the creator economy blueprint. But as I stated, it really comes down to building a strong community. What this takes is, and again, I want to be careful here not to paint this picture that this whole thing is just like super easy. And all you got to do is just, Hey, turn your camera on and you're going to be successful. It does take some work. You have to create a community and that's what this is about. You have to create a community of, of these followers. Your 1000 true fans are not going to be that when they first follow you, 
you have to cultivate them. Once they follow you, you have to develop relationships with them. You have to get in with them on this thing to, you know, where you're giving them value, you're talking to them, you're responding to comments. It's just like a friendship or relationship. Like your best friend probably didn't become your best friend overnight. There was a time period where it built up to that. They started by, you know, maybe you had some common interests or whatever. And then over the, over time that built up into something else. This is what I mean by building a community. And this is why this is one of the first things that you have to do in this creator economy. So with that being said, this is where collaborations come in. So the power of collaborations. Now, when we're talking about collaborations, this is basically how you're going to develop your following and get those 1000 true fans that we just talked about really quickly and really easily. So what you want to start doing is collaborating with a lot of other bands and musicians, collaborate with event planners and coordinators that can get you, you know, these types of gigs and get you in front of people so that you can get in front of crowds to sort of commandeer them and bring them into your social media platforms where you can develop relationships to them. And of course you want to be developing collaborations with businesses and venues. Now, this is something that's important. What I'm explaining to you here is sort of a quick way to get a lot of people to your social media so you can develop this following really quickly. And one of the things that you want to be doing is collaborating with other bands and musicians who have, you know, bigger social media platforms than you. I was going to say more followers than, than you and all of that kind of stuff. I, I want to be careful about saying that word because now this what's shifting in this creator economy a little bit is that it's not really about the follower count per se. I and mean, of course, that's always going to be important, but it's not really about the follower account. It's about the amount of views that you're getting. But in a lot of ways, the views are going to come through the amount of followers that you have. But that's something for another time. But I just wanted to be clear on that. So. But one of the ways that you can do that is that you collaborate with other bands and musicians who have larger platforms, larger followings. And I'm not necessarily talking about, oh, you only have 500 subscribers on Instagram. So you go out and reach out to somebody that has five or 10 million. That's not necessarily what I'm saying, although that would work and you could do that. And you probably should. If you have that in where you can reach out like that, go for it, please. But I'm talking about people that are just, you know, mildly, mildly more successful than you. So if you have 500 subscribers or 500 followers or you get a few views on your YouTube videos or whatever per week or whatever, reach out to someone who gets a little bit more than that, who makes maybe double than that or triple than that. So somebody who has 1500 subscribers and, you know, makes a little bit of money, talk to those folks and collaborate with them. They're more likely going to be willing to, to collaborate with you on Things like content, you know, putting out content, doing something together, a podcast, doing some music together. You know, the platforms I just showed you of these artists where you had a couple of them that were doing collaborations where you had two people on the video and all of this kind of stuff, which worked for both people. So that's one of the ways that you can collaborate with bands and musicians. Now, another way is also with event planners and coordinators. So things like wedding coordinators and, you know, huge events and stuff like that, right? People who have this kind of stuff where when you talk to them, you develop relationships with them and they can get you these kind of gigs that pay this kind of money if you're still trying to do the gig route. And I really want to be clear about that as well. When I was talking about, you know, the live performances being down, there's still money to be made there, you know, at least currently. So this is part of what goes into making these relationships with these event planners and coordinators and businesses and venues. So and then, of course, the businesses and venues is the same thing as the event coordinator. So you want to develop these collaborations and relationships with like the, the people in your area, like the bars and clubs that hire the bands and stuff like that, that can not only get you in their spots, if you want to be making that money over there, but can also recommend you to other people and help you get a following, right? This is kind of the stuff that's going into this creator economy. So, this is the power of collaborations and it's why it's something that is really at the foundation of what you're going to be doing to succeed in this creator economy. Now, let me just take a pause here for a minute and just, uh, I want to go to the chat here and check to make sure you guys are okay. Let's see. Yeah. You guys put a lot in here. 
Uh, let me check and see what you guys are saying. Um, Octavia is saying hi. Uh, hi. Hi, Octavia. How are you? So I'm, I'm catching up on some of you guys' comments. So Trey is saying, hey, Fisher World. What's up, Trey? <laughs> Sam is saying, let's go. Uh, Miko Reed is asking, Terrence, are you a full-time musician? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Here, a lot of people ask me about this. I don't talk a lot about myself. I, I try to take myself out of my content, not necessarily even purposely. I just don't want everything to be about me. And I, I'm not trying to be this. Oh, I got this. I've made it and I've done all of this. And you should listen to me. That's not, I don't like taking that position. So I don't talk a lot about myself and you know what I do, but you guys are here. You guys are, you know, supporting me here. So I, I do want to be open with you about that. I am a full-time musician. I've been a full-time musician for literally, literally my entire life. I've never worked a nine to five job. I have a degree in music, I'm going to school for music and all of that kind of stuff. I've never worked a nine to five job, a corporate job or anything like that. And so I've been a full-time musician my entire life. I just was uh, had a, this is busy season, really busy season for me. I'm literally booked every we every almost I'm almost sure so every Friday and Saturday for the rest of the year for sure but most Sundays for the rest of the year as well for gigs um a lot of people ask me let me see I just where's my let me see if I can show you guys this so uh, and this is just to show you um I want to give you an idea of what's possible out there. So, I, you know, when I talk about this stuff, I, I kind of want to show proof that this stuff is possible. So I talk about this, these low paying gigs and stuff out there and how we shouldn't be accepting, you know, one of my most popular videos here on the channel is that is I talk about why musicians shouldn't be doing hundred dollar gigs. And it's because there's other ways out there to make more money and musicians are being paid more money. So I'll just show you this really quickly. This is my, um, I have to cover up the names and stuff here before I show you this. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Make sure I got this covered up so I don't show the wrong thing. So this is a, a check that I received just last night. Let me see if I can put this up to the camera and show you if that's going to. I'm not sure if that's going to focus. Let's see. There it is. You're going to focus. You guys can see that I'm out right there. I hope you guys can see that. I put it up. I hope it, you can see it. But that's just from a gig that I did last night, literally last night. I mean, it, and it was played for what two hours. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at. Let me see. I'm hoping that it's, it's actually not coming. It didn't come up in focus, did it? Oh, yes, it did a little bit at one point. So you can see the amount there right above my finger. <laughs> I, all right. So um, to answer your question, Miko, yes, I am a full time musician. Uh, Olivia is saying, uh, hi, Terrence. Hey, uh, Zach is asking, will the replay for this be available? Yes. I'm going to leave this video up for a little while. So you guys will be able to see it. I am going to take it down or make it private though. So it's going to go away. So you'll have a couple of days to, to watch it. Um, Trey is saying it's as crowded as the dating scene. <laughs> we know it. <laughs> That's absolutely true, man. It's crowded as the dating scene. Miko is saying again, it's overcrowded with people that shouldn't be playing either. They need to sharpen their music seals. Not trying to uh, harsh to be harsh, but it's true. I mean, maybe Miko, I don't I don't take the position. Me personally, I don't take the position necessarily that people shouldn't be playing um, because I, I me. I always think that there's enough to go around for everybody. But with that enoughness in this whole thing, there is a hierarchy and there's people that learn how to get to the top of that mountain, so to speak, and, you know, sort of dominate. And that's what I'm, some of the things that I'm trying to show you here. So it, it makes the people that are coming in that quote unquote, shouldn't be playing, you know, kind of irrelevant, you know, because there, there's a place for them as well. So that's, that's my position on that. Um, Trey saying, yeah, indeed. I refer to them as bottom feeders. Yeah. This is, my response to that is the same. Um, Miss Mason Gray is saying, I just saw this. I'm, I'm going to read through these really fast, so, y'all, so we can kind of get back to the stuff here. I really want to get you guys some value here. Uh, so you guys are still talking about the not saying that they can't be in the music space. Yeah. Okay. David, uh, hello, just joined. David, thanks you for joining, David. Uh, Olivia saying, I saw Folly Mary Spender. She's great. Yeah. Also, great videos doing some things on YouTube. Yeah. She's a great, she's one of the uh, artists that I showed 
Uh, I think she's from the UK as well. She's really great. Um, you're asking how much was the amount? It actually says, let me see if I can show it again. Let me see if I can put it in focus here for you guys. Uh, it's probably not focusing because I got my hand over the thing and it's trying to focus on my hand, but I have to cover up the information here so that I don't put that information out. Let me see, sort of get it as close as I can, see if it focuses. There it is. See that? Yeah, so that was just a gig that I did last night. And that's, please don't take that as me trying to like flaunt or anything. That's that's just not the case. I'm just showing you that's what's what's possible. I mean, I've, I've done more than that for gigs anyway, or gotten more than that from gigs. So um, yeah, that's that's where we are. So anyway, let's get back to this. I, I really want to get you guys some 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 value in here and talk about what's happening on these social media platforms. So let's get back to this. Let me get a sip of water here. So <laughs> I'm getting a little dry. All right. <clears throat> so let me go. Let's see where we are here. Okay, there we go. So let's talk a little bit about the social media platforms that pay. Now I mentioned YouTube and you know, the AdSense and all of that, but you also have use YouTube super chats and paid subscriptions and all of that. That's one of the major ways that a lot of these content creators that I mentioned are getting paid um, through these sort of subscription things. So, Check this out. It's not only this. This is why the creator economy is so, so, so beneficial for so many of us musicians and artists. It's almost like this. The creator economy was created for us as creators. I mean, we, that's what we do as musicians. We create. Right. It's almost like this was created for us. You have these multiple streams of income that you can make just from a single platform. So check this out. Let me paint this out for you. As I mentioned, you have, once you have that amount of followers, like a lot of these artists that I just showed you, you get a certain number of followers. You have, out of those numbers of followers, you get the 1,000 true fans that are going to support you and no matter what you do, no matter what you put out, you put out a CD, they're gonna buy it, put out merch, they're gonna buy it, you get all of that. You have, that's an income source, right? So again, one EP a year, five songs on it, 10,000 bucks really easily, right? Really easily. That's one stream. Also, when you have that many followers on, say, YouTube, you, you have the ability to do what's called memberships. So you have YouTube memberships where people can subscribe to you. It's almost like a Patreon thing. Excuse me, where they are able to pay you a subscription fee per month. So like, you know, nine ninety nine per month or something like that to get exclusive content. So in that exclusive content, they do stuff like the artists will do stuff like behind the scenes stuff and talk to people and answer their questions and all of that kind of stuff. People who kind of want to have a, a, a closer relationship with them. That's an income stream. Now, of course, YouTube and the, all of the other social media platforms and even Patreon takes a little bit of that money off the top. Um, but it's a small percentage and it's really it's almost like free income because you're not really doing anything differently than you normally do. You're creating the content, you're creating extra content, for, you know, some extra content for the people who are subscribed to you. So let's say you have just say a hundred people subscribed to your YouTube membership. So we talked about the, the 1000 true fans, that's an income stream. Now you have another income stream for, from your 100 people who signed up to be subscribers for 999 a month. There's your thousand dollars a month right there. Extra thousand dollars a month, really easy. $12,000 a year, really easily. Another income stream. Not only these two things, this keeps going. This is why this is so great. This keeps going. Not only those two things. The other thing I brought up was AdSense. So YouTube in particular, as your videos get popular, as people view them and YouTube, you, we all know how the ads work on YouTube when you're watching a video and then an ad pops up. Well, the creators that make those videos. So like if you watch one of my videos and, and an ad comes up and I get a particular amount of views on that ad and people click on that ad, YouTube will pay me or any content creator that, that, that ad is on. So if you have a video on YouTube 
and get getting those kind of views, YouTube will pay you through AdSense. Of course, again, they take a little bit off top for that, but again, that's another income stream. That's three huge income streams right there. And AdSense is the one where, again, you're not doing anything. You're creating videos, you're putting them out, YouTube put the ads on them, and then checks show up in your bank account. Three income streams from one platform. And I haven't even really dug into the crux of everything that you can do. That's just what I would call like the big three. Really easily. So now you're you're seeing how the artists are out here killing it. They're some of them making hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, six figures and more per, per year, right? Really, really easily just by these income streams. And all they do is wake up during the day, turn their camera on, say, hey, everybody, how are you doing? I'm working on this song on my guitar, or on my keyboard, or help me work through the vocals on this song and do it. And people watch it. 1,000 true fans, you know, pay them when they release something. YouTube is paying them for the AdSense and their subscribers are paying them $9.99 a month to get that kind of content. It's It's a no brainer. I'm, I'm right now. This is I, I hope you're paying attention to this. I'm giving you the keys. This is the blueprint, the blueprint. This is the map to success. This is how people are out there killing it. This is how musicians and artists and bands are out there killing it. So, again, the the equivalent on some of the other platforms like soup, uh, YouTube's and all of that kind of stuff. Now, I should have mentioned this actually on this video. This is this is I'll just mention this um, income stream as well on YouTube. So like on live streams here, I'm doing a live stream right now. Let me open up my live stream panel here so I can see it myself so I can make sure I'm doing a live stream here now. And just by doing this live stream, you could, you guys can see down here on the video, you can go super chat me if you want to. So you can pay me. And of course you guys can, if you guys are getting value out of this, you guys are welcome to send super chats. The reason I didn't say anything about it, cause I'm, I'm not doing this to, to like for super chaps or anything. But again, I know if I, I never want to block anybody's blessings, so to speak. So if you feel generous, you you're welcome to do that. So you see down there in the chat where you can send a super chat if you want to. So this is another way artists and bands are killing it. They're live streaming, you know, they'll get on a live stream for an hour or two or however long, you know, give some value, play some music or whatever. And people give them super chats and they're getting paid through that way. I just get, this is, it's, it's such a no brainer. It is such a no brainer. Like this is, this is the way. And again, I am talking about it, but I want to be clear here. I'm not saying that this is a, just a really, really easy thing. Some people, this to get to this point, it takes some time. It takes some effort to get to this point. So I'm not saying that it's easy, but it is simple and it's quick, relatively speaking. You know, if we again had been talking about this 10 years ago, this would have been different. This is the way to success. So the other platforms like Twitter has like the super follow or what it's called X now has like the super follows or whatever. Something it's like the equivalent of super chats here. Uh, you also have Patreon. Now, this is another way. My goodness. Patreon is another way. Right. Patreon. Let me go back to my screen here. Uh Patreon is another way. It's another subscription platform that I mentioned, just like the, the YouTube memberships and Instagram has memberships as well. And TikTok has memberships, just, just the same. Patreon is a subscription thing where, you know, you get exclusive content and people subscribe to you for, you know, however much a month. Some people are doing subscriptions like 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 bucks a month, right? Just through just to get exclusive content and buy me a coffee is another subscription platform. So Patreon and buy me a coffee are, are kind of like competitors of each other. So that's what they do. Multiple income streams. Again, this is, this is me just naming four or five of them. There's lots more of them, some more lucrative than others, of course, and some are more beneficial just depending on what position or the position you're in as an artist, a band or whatever. Right. But this is the way that these people, a lot of these artists and musicians are making literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars per year with almost little to no effort, at least little to no like long-term effort. There's some, there's quite a bit of effort that you got to put in upfront for this, but there's some, some success stories where people are literally, when I say this doesn't happen overnight, but it does for some people, some people jump on this and in a couple of weeks, 
put out a video or something that it gets a couple of million views and that brings them in hundreds of thousands of subscribers, hundreds of thousands of ads are being played on their video. So they're making money through AdSense. So they, they literally jump into this success thing overnight. And this, this creator economy thing, the important thing about it is it's not just us musicians and artists and bands. We've seen people like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast is probably the, not even probably, he is the most popular YouTuber ever. And he's really figured out YouTube like he's he has it down and he creates content with all this crazy stuff, driving big trains into holes and all of this kind of stuff that makes his videos interesting. And he's I mean, this this guy's young and he's basically I think they're saying he's going to be the first. I don't want to misquote that. Maybe. I don't I don't know if it's trillionaire, but I, uh, maybe a billionaire. He's going to be the first youtuber that is like a multiple multiple billionaire just from creating content that this is the possibility guys you become a billion you become a warren buffett and a you know a, a jeff bezos and all of these kind of a mark zuckerberg by sitting in your house turning on a camera and a microphone pressing record and creating content it's mind-blowing i'm i'm even know how else to describe this. This is, you have to get in on this. You got to get in on this. So, all right, let's keep this thing going. Now, just a couple of things here about online education and entertainment. So the thing about on this online creator economy that we're talking about, it's really divided up into like two sections and that is education and entertainment. So the, platforms that I showed you earlier from the other artists, you can describe those as entertainment because you see they're entertaining. They're putting out entertaining entertainment content. Whereas something like this live stream that I'm doing now is sort of more educational. Like I'm showing you something, I'm teaching you something, you know, I'm giving you value in that way. So this is basically what the creator economy is sort of divided up in. And it's important to understand that because a lot of people get into this and think that, you know, I'm not that great of a musician. I I don't sing that well. I don't play that well. I don't do this. And this is the thing about it. You don't have to. You this God, this is it's so exciting when I talk about it. I have to calm down. This is the craziest thing about this. Like you don't have to be like a virtuoso. You don't have to be a master at your craft or anything like that. You can come in. One of the things that I always talk about is this is something important to understand that this music economy and this creator economy that we're in, it's really tribal. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. I know a few of you have probably heard me say this before, but I'm going to keep using this as an example because it keeps ringing true and it's so important. What I mean by tribal is so artists like Beyonce, Beyonce has her tribe of fans, right? Called the beehive. The beehive is the the basically the equivalent of the 1000 true fans for Beyonce. The beehive is Beyonce supporters. It doesn't Beyonce can wake up and, you know, I don't know, <laughs> fart on an album cover and the beehive, <laughs> the beehive people are going to buy it. And not only that, they're going to think that it's the greatest thing ever. That's a tribe. She's developed a tribe. Lizzo, the artist Lizzo. She, her tribe is called the Lesbians, which is a really funny name to me, but her tribe is called the Lesbians, right? The Lesbians, they support Lizzo in whatever she does. I could go on. Justin Bieber. What's his tribe called? The Believers, right? His tribal people are called Believers. They support everything he does. Taylor Swift. Right now, arguably the most popular artist in the world, just making a killing out here. She just did this movie release thing where she would release her concert at a movie theater made a killing on that. Like she, she's putting out the blueprint as well. What's the, what's the tribe of Taylor Swift fans call the Swifties. It's tribal. This is important. This is what, this is why this is important. It's not only for these big artists, these artists that I just showed you on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, they have a tribe. They have those followers that have, subscribe to them to support them become their 1000 true fans 
again, just think of what I'm saying now is the 1000 as a sort of metaphor, but whatever the number is, is irrelevant. They, they have that certain number of true fans that are supporting them, their tribe of people. And that tribe thing is available to both you and me. I'm telling you, I'm it's, it's just, it's what it is. It's every time I say it, my mind is just blown by me saying this. It's just so because I come up, you have to understand, I come from a time where, you know, to be successful as a musician, like you, you had to be like a killer virtuoso or at least close to it you, because you were in competition with other people that were that you had to work to get your stuff seen and, you know, try to get signed by a record label and, you know, get a record contract and get promotional deals and get artist relation people in to help you with all of you had to work really hard to get all of that. And it was, it was like trying to get into the NBA or NFL, you know, how the NFL draft where I don't know if many of you are football fans, I'm not really, I'm more of a basketball fan. So basically NBA or NFL, any of those things, it's only a certain amount of people that are going to get in there every year. Right. And it was the same with the music industry. But now this creator economy has leveled that playing field. It's available to anybody. The average Joe Schmo, Jane Schmo, who can, you know, knows how to turn on the camera and do something that's entertaining can be a billionaire. That is just really crazy. So anyway, that's really important to understand, like these two divisions between the the creator economy. So the you have things like online music lessons where would, that would fall into the category of like an, a, a sort of more an educational thing, right? You have things like virtual concerts where you can do live streams where you can make money from a virtual concert, which is more entertaining. And then, of course, you can do things like online courses. A lot of creators are doing that kind of stuff. So they'll put out, um, you know, content based around some of the things that they do. So let's say I started as an entertainer on YouTube. I'm playing guitar, or playing piano, and I'm doing this. Well, if I have a lot of people asking me, oh, well, what's those chords you're playing? How do you how did you get to the point to where you can do solos like that or sing runs or whatever like that? Well, I may move over into thing, a thing where I'm doing both. I can do the entertainment, but I can put out a course saying that the top, you know, 25 ways or how to become a a virtuoso on the piano and play, you know, this type of way make money from that kind of stuff too. Right. So there's many ways to get this, get to this sort of success in this creator economy. Now the online learning and the creator economy basically has grown over 900%. Get that number in your head. 900% since the year 2000, according to Statista, that's a, a, a stat, a stat, statistic site that puts all of these statistics out. So you're talking about in the last 20 years, this thing has grown almost a thousand percent. That is absolutely crazy. And this massive growth is expected to continue as techno technological advancements continue to improve. So things like AI and all of that stuff is coming in. All of this, it's rapidly growing this e creator economy thing that we're in. So the picture I'm trying to paint to you here is that to whatever extent that people are like, if you like, oh, I would try it, but it looks like it's crowded in the creator economy. And, you know, it looks like you have to be this. I'm painting you this picture to show you that not only is that not true now, it's becoming less and less true because the creator economy is growing. More money is being poured into it. More people are getting into it. Now, of course, that's going to mean that some competition is going to be a little bit stiffer in some areas and stuff like that. That's just a part of the game, but the opportunities are increasing exponentially to, to get in on this thing. So it's not like it's like you have to have this again. Oh, the people out there, they're better than me. Like, forget all of that. You got to jump in on this particular thing, right? Now, Digital education alone is expected to grow by 33% by 2026. Again, just a couple of years from now, right? Digital education was only 46 billion just five years ago. So now you multiply 46 billion by 33%. I'm showing you this growth. It is becoming increasingly 
obvious that this Creani, creator economy thing, Creonomy, creator economy thing is the route for musicians and artists and bands. It just is. You got to get, you got to get off your butt. You got to get off the couch and get in on this thing because it is just too easy. And I, my thing about, you know, music space, YouTube channel here, I created this channel, you know, solely for the purposes of that. I was, I'm in the music industry and I'm seeing so many people like just go about doing a lot of things in ways that are not conducive to what they're trying to achieve. All of us are out here trying to get better. We want to make more money. We want to, you know, a lot of us want to do what we do and love, you know, this craft of music and all of that. We want to do it full time and make money from it to be able to support ourselves and our families. And I, I would see so many musicians doing things that worked against that goal. So I said, you know, let me start this channel. Let me do this particular thing to sort of put out some information to kind of help because it, it wasn't necessarily even their fault. A lot of people were just being misguided. When I tell you this, this situation where I talked about 15, 20 years ago, where the, um, it was really hard to get in on success because you had to have, you had to be good. You had to have, you know, get a record contract and all of that kind of stuff because there was such a divide between like the average person and there was no social media out there was telling or teaching people the kind of ins and outs. There was a huge divide between the record labels and the musicians in terms of the information that would be going out. So a lot of musicians just didn't understand what they needed to do. So, you know, with them wanting to be successful, they were just trying stuff. But in that, I saw them again, working against themselves, doing things that just wasn't necessarily conducive to the goals that they were trying to make. So again, that's why I started the YouTube channel, this music space, YouTube channel to put this information out as best as I could, you know, the, whatever success that I've had and I've learned and I've grown from, I wanted to share that information so that other people can get in on it. And that's what I'm sharing now, because what I'm telling you, the thing I'm telling you about this creator economy is what I'm doing every day. That's what, that's what I do. I mean, outside of gigging and stuff like that, of course, but this is where I'm putting my time and I'm putting eggs into this basket and it's working. So I, I want to share that with you. So this is the importance of understanding this, you know, this, this growth that this community and creator economy thing is and what it's going to be over the next few years. Now this comes in or this brings in the question of what this means for you. And this is something I've alluded to a little bit already, but you can no longer just depend on regular gigs to make money or to be discovered. The music industry of old is done. It's done really. And you need to evolve or get left behind. So it really comes down to the fact that you have a choice to make. You can either struggle and try to, you know, do it the old way and try to still depend on live performances, which are down and still try to get these clubs and, you know, bars and all of that to pay more money, which they're never going to do seemingly. That's a, that's a lost cause. You can either do that and struggle, or you can get on what in on what I'm talking about here and you can thrive. <clears throat> so this is, these are some things that you should know. And these are some things that, um, are going to help you on your way to getting started in this creator economy. <clears throat> So the very first thing that you need to do is you need to decide how you will serve others with your music or talent. Now, this is something I just spoke to about what I'm doing here on this music space channel. And with this, let me, let me give you the key here. Let me give you the punchline. Basically what you have to do in the creator economy, what's going to make you stand out over other people is your disposition on giving value to people. You have to take the position that you're going to, go into this giving more than you get. It's just the bottom line to it. That's so now you see why I didn't mention super chats on this video up front. I didn't say, Hey guys, I'm live here. You make sure you give me a super chat. I'm more interested in giving to you than getting something from you. You have to take that position. 
in everything. Now, I want to be clear about this. A lot of people get confused about what that means for like entertainment. Well, if I want to get on camera and just create some music and, you know, put my videos and stuff out, how does, how does it make me, am I, aren't I trying to get attention and aren't I trying to, you know, get something from people? Well, yes, but you want to position what you do in terms of giving value. I'll share with you one of the things I released a EP has been two years ago now. And one of the reasons I, the EP did so well financially for me, um, is because I positioned it when I was, I literally took the mindset when I was writing the music and I was composing the music and recording it and mixing and mastering and all of that kind of stuff. I took the position of, I want to create something, this music that's going to be valuable to people. So we were, you know, still mid pandemic, you know, people were stressed. So I wanted to create something. I wanted to say, Hey, I want to create this project for people to have something to relax and de-stress to. That's the value that I'm creating and that I'm giving, right? I did online virtual performances where I just went live, kind of like I'm doing now, I had my keyboard and all of that kind of stuff in view where I played for people and all of that, right? Help them go to sleep at night. That, that was me positioning what I do to give value. And when I did that, and when people see that you're authentic about doing that and that you're, you're true about wanting to give more than you're getting, they will give to you. That is the trick. I don't, I don't want to harp on this too long, but that is the trick to this creator economy thing, taking the position of giving more and serving others with your musical talent than you're trying to get from them. All right. So make sure you understand that. <clears throat> now, Something else you should start doing if you're new to this whole thing is you need to start posting on social media and develop an authority and grow a fan base. You need to start doing this. Let me show you something really quickly. I'm going to just really quickly. I'll show you how easy this is what I'm talking about. Let me go to my main camera here and then pull up what I showed you on YouTube. Um, so let me go to my other screen here. So check this out. This is I'll just pull this up really quickly. So let me switch my account. I have a couple of YouTube channels here. Let me go to this one, this YouTube channel here. Let me go to my home. This is a YouTube channel I created. Um, all I do on this channel, let me just go view to my channel. There we go. All I do on this channel is upload these exact same videos that I put on YouTube. I, I put literally almost zero effort into this channel. I don't want to say zero. I mean, cause I'm, I'm still positioned to where I give value but I'm basically just repurposing the content that I put on Instagram, right? I So I put up like once a month, this is one video three weeks ago, two months ago, two months ago. You see how far in between these videos are in and just 305 subscribers are coming in just from 13 videos that I didn't even create for YouTube, for this particular YouTube channel. I just wanted to give people a uh, another avenue to find me because I know a lot of people are on YouTube and prefer YouTube over like Instagram, which I, I do put a lot of effort into. So I just wanted to create these to kind of give people a, something to follow me from. 305,000 subscribers, not 5,000, 305 subscribers, period. So it's why well, I'm showing you why you may say that, oh, 305, that's not huge. It's, of course it's not compared to what I showed you earlier, but I'm showing you how little effort it takes to start. Now, just think if I started like really honing in on this channel and, you know, focusing on the YouTube audience and all of that kind of stuff, what I could do with this channel. So I'm showing you again how easy this is. This is the point of what I'm saying here about how, you know, easy it is to get in on this creator economy thing. So to develop a, a fan base and a community really, really quickly and easily, it doesn't take much effort. Uh, you just got to start. That's the most important thing. Now, next in this whole thing, you want to be positioning yourself as a professional and build a website. Now, a lot of people have questions about websites and all of that. And that's, it's a little bit outside of the scope of this training. So I don't want to get into it too much, but uh, it's enough to say that if you're a professional brand and you're trying to create something professional and you're trying to make professional money, the type of money that professionals make, every professional has a website. So if you're a musician, artist and band or band or something like that, you need to have a website. It doesn't need to be elaborate. It doesn't need to be 
like overblown anything, just a simple website would do. But positioning yourself as a professional in this thing or as the authority, authoritative figure in this thing is the thing that is going to help separate you from a lot of other content creators. Now, let me be clear what I mean by this authoritative figure thing. I don't, I don't mean like you showing up like this bravado thing. Like I'm all that I have all of the answers. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I'm saying that when you get to a point to where you're creating enough content and you're consistent with it, people will automatically start to see you as the go-to person for that thing. This is write this down. If you're taking notes here, this is the thing that you want to become in any niche in the creator economy. The thing that you want to become is the go-to person. So when a person has a question about this particular thing, or when a person needs to be relaxed by the type of entertainment, the type of music that you do, you need to become the go-to person. And the way that you do that is just that you, you start being consistent about what you do and you show up and you know, people will start to see you that way. All right. So that's important to understand. Now, also you need to start making phone calls and send texts to connect and collaborate. We talked about collaborating and why that's important. You need to start that, that, that is like the gas, in your tank in this creator economy, like the connections and collaborations that you make. There's a a podcast that I follow right now, this guy who just started a podcast like a couple of months ago, and he started, the way he started his podcast was collaborating with larger people in his niche. And literally just in a couple of months, I think he got to like 40,000 subscribers or something like that on his YouTube channel, just by collaborating. Because what happened was he cre- he collaborated with those people and then they, the followings that those people had, of course, watched the content and they liked it. So they started following that, the, this person that created the podcast. So this is the power of collaborations. This is like jet fuel in your tank. If you want to start, this is a good way to start out now also, and this is really, really important. You need to seek help from those who are more knowledgeable than you in the music industry. Seek help from those who are more knowledgeable than you in the music industry. This is where a lot of us, uh, a lot of us content creators and a lot of us musicians and artists, this is our Achilles heel, so to speak, right? We, we think we can do everything by ourselves. We really do. And it's just not the case when you're, when you're going into something, you can, of course, you know, I always use a, the, the trying to get in shape or trying to lose weight as an analogy, of course. You can go to the gym. You can you can start eating better on your own. You can do that and you can make some progress. So it's not like it's impossible. But guess what the most successful people, guess what the Arnold Schwarzeneggers of the world did when they were trying to get to the top of this mountain and, and trying to dominate a, a, an industry? Guess what they did? They went out and got somebody to help train them. They got a trainer. That's why football players in the professional leagues, they have a coach. The NBA has a coach. All, all professional sports has a coach because they understand that it's important to have somebody who is a bit more knowledgeable than them that can see blind spots. That's what it comes down to. Trainers, coaches, teachers, consultants. That's a, that's a whole line of business because people understand the value of Having someone in your circle, mentors, you know, I I have a mentor that somebody that the guy who actually gave me my first gig, you know, over 30 years ago, uh, now actually over, over, has it been 30 years? Close to 30 years. Still my mentor today, um, that I, I just, you know, I learned so much from him and he took me under my wing, under his wing. So I, you know, I still get people to mentor me. Right. And it, it's made all of the difference. So it, that's really important. You got to understand that you need to be seeking help from a lot of these people. All right. So what are some takeaways that we've talked about here? Just a quick recap. So we talked about the industry being saturated and bands and musicians are vying for the, all of these same types of gigs and why that's, you know, not such a good thing anymore because it's like you have these, um, for lack of a better way to say it, it may be a better way to say it, but like these bottom of the barrel sort of gigs and stuff that like all of these musicians and bands are vying for when they don't have to be. 
So all of the competition is is down there for these types of gigs. <clears throat> now, the next thing we talked about is that the old methods of making money with your music and the old way that musicians did all of it, it's no longer working. It's done. You, you, you just got to be done with it, period. Also, we talked about the average pay for musicians and artists and bands are not increasing while the cost of living is going up significantly, going up really significantly. So you got to do something to make a change on that if you're trying to make money from your your music and your craft and your art. Also, talk about how growing a fan base or community is the new record contract. So this is literally the equivalent of 15, 20 years ago, signing a record contract and they give you this upfront money to go out and make a, a video to put on MTV or BET or all of this, kind of the, the video places. This is what this creator economy is doing for musicians and artists and bands now. Get in on it. You don't, you're not signed. You're not, you don't sign your life away to somebody, but you're creating content. You got videos out like a music video. You can do a music video with your phone now if you wanted to. So you got all of this stuff out. You're making money that way instead of being signed to a label. It's almost, it's the equivalent. And when I say equivalent, equivalent, I mean, that's just the way that they make money. This creator economy is much better like in a hundred different ways than like record contracts and getting signed to a label and all of that kind of stuff was back in the day. Now, the thing here, the biggest takeaway is that if you want to thrive as a musician, artist, a band, you have to change now. Like now is the time. One of the things I didn't paint the picture of much because I, I'm not in the business of trying to like put, put these fear tactics out and all this kind of stuff that people do to kind of scare people into doing something. I, I think people are smart enough to understand when you give them value and that you, uh, you explain stuff to them well, that they understand the value of, so you don't have to scare people into doing stuff. But with that, I do want to say that, you know, this thing that I'm talking about, it's not going to be the same way forever. The, the opportunity that exists right now, as great as it is, it's not going to last forever. It'll morph and it'll, it'll change. It may grow. It may go down. It may rise. It may increase. But it's definitely going to change. Nothing is certain about life other than change. So it's going to be different. And as more people come in on this creator economy that, like we're saying, is going to double within the next few years, that means a lot of the competition is going to get a lot, lot more stiff. So you're in the position, we're all in the position right now where we can take advantage of this thing and, you know, really have it be something that um, we don't have that competition co going forward or at least much competition as we will have in the next few years, in the next coming years. So if you want to have, you want to change you or, or want to thrive, you really have to change right now. And so it really is time to make a change if you want to succeed. It's, it's really time to pivot. It's really time to pivot and, and really move away from that, from a lot of those older ways and, you know, this old way of thinking. A, a lot of this whole thing for a lot of people, too, is just really adopting a new way of thinking about success and being successful in what they do and really shifting away from this whole selfish mentality of everything is about me and about Instead, you know, let me see how I can be valuable to other people and make value for them so that they will be more willing to give me the things that I desire. You know, the attention, the notoriety, the, even the, the money and all of that. So it's really time to pivot away from those things. And I'm, I'm telling you, the price of success is action. It, it really is. The price of success is action. No accomplishment. Achievement or success happens without action. My friends, it just, it, that's just the case. If you want to be successful, if you want to lose weight, if you want to make more money, you want to, uh, you know, be, have better relationships, any of those things, it takes action. You can't just sit on your butt. If you want to lose weight, you got to start eating better. You got to take the action of eating better or or working out. You want better relationships. You're going to have to fix some things. You're going to have to start talking more, be more communicative, communicative, all of those things. You're going to have to work at it. You want to make more money. You may have to take action to start saving more money or whatever those things may be, but you have to take action. This is something that's really important. So many people just sit around and wait for these, like they, they, with this disposition of like, Oh, it's going to come to me. And all I have to do is just sit here and wait. No, no, no. Change is happening too fast. 
opportunities are, are brushing by your door on your table and you have to be ready to take action on them. So the price of action is or the pr price of success is action. Now, what if with all of that being said, what if there was a simple way that you could connect with other musicians, learn and grow, learn how to grow your fan base and build your music business and radically transform your music career. Would you want to know what it is? Well, I got it for you guys. I got it. And this is where I talked about at the beginning. This is going to be your big opportunity that I'm going to present to you. And you, I really want you to pay attention here. I really want you to get on it in on this. So I really want to tell you about musicians in a circle and musicians in a circle helps musicians grow their fan base, be better in what they do and make more money. So I'll talk about it a little bit. What is musicians in a circle? MIC for short. Mike is the acronym. I, I love that Mike is the acronym for musicians in a circle. So it's an exclusive network of musicians dedicated to learning and growing and making beneficial connections. That's what musicians in a circle is. And then some of the benefits that we have of musicians in a circle is that you learn to grow your business and increase your income from gigs and other performances. That's something that, that we focus on quite a bit in, in musicians in a circle. You get to make connections with other musicians in the industry. If that's something that you want to do. Also, you have exclusive access to me and my resources. So a lot of the content that you see that I put out on YouTube, um, I don't get a chance to go into depth about it a lot, but in musicians in a circle, we do what I'm doing here now, like this live feed here, we do this all the time in musicians in a circle. So we get to talk about issues. We get to, you know, um, hash through all of the things that we talked about. We get to go through the nitty gritty of the, all of the things like in the creator economy and about gigging and about all of these other things, right? This is something that we get, uh, as a part of musicians in a circle. So, and again, me and my resources, although I'm, I'm never going to profess to be like, again, this, I'm not the guru. I'm not, I'm just, I'm not going to show up like this. It's just, just not me, but I have over my 30, 35 career year career in music, been able to gain some, some success, be able to do okay. And I want to be able to give that value in whatever way I can. And that's me sharing my you know, just sharing me and my knowledge and my resources. So that's what you get as a, also as a part of musicians in a circle. So, and you get a, the ability to get your questions answered. All of us have questions. You remember I talk, talked about earlier about getting help and seeking help from those who are more knowledgeable than you. Not that I may even know more than you, but if I, if you have a question that you need answered and I got the answer for it, you get it. It, that's something that one of the most valuable things that a lot of people in musicians in a circle say that they, they really like the most. So in addition to that, we do monthly trainings, like what we're doing here, this live stream, we do this monthly. We break down all of the issues, anything that you want to discuss, talk about. We have a prepared thing that we're going to, we dive into every month and we do these monthly trainings. So we take musicians every month from, you know, one space to another, they become more informed, more prepared to, um, you know, just be successful in the music industry. And then one of the other benefits is that I know you don't know because I, you probably don't know because I don't talk about it much, but I have many, many online courses uh, that go for a kind of pricey dollar amounts. And everybody that's a part of musician, musicians in a circle get those courses at discounts. And I'm, I'm honestly just going to be very forthcoming with you about that. 99% I said discounts here because some of them you do get discounts on it, but 99% of them go to the musicians and a circle members for free. I'll just, I'll give you full disclosure on that. So those are the benefits of musicians in a circle. Now here's the thing I've helped and coached and trained hundreds at this point, probably even thousands at this point, but at least hundreds of musicians to make a living and be successful by using their musical talents. But when I started out, I didn't know any of this stuff, like any of the stuff that I'm talking about now and how to be successful and all of that kind of stuff. I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't know the importance of business and how to set prices and, you know, why it was important to set prices a certain way or 
how to get gigs, how to talk to people in a business manner to make sure I got the gigs properly, how to promote my music or anything like that. I just didn't know because nobody was there to teach me. But now I'm in a different place. I'm a full time musician and I've been able to live comfortably just by using my musical talent and skills. I've been, and I've been doing that for the last, you know, 30 years of my life. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really the thing that I'm, one of the things about my life I'm most proud of that I've, you know, I've gotten to this place to where I'm, I'm a full-time musician and I've been able to live comfortably just using my hands and my skills and what I do musically. But it really all started when I got connected with other people in the industry and I started learning these business strategies and I was able to get the questions that I have answered about, you know, pricing and how to, you know, start social media, how to do certain things on social media and what I need to say to club owners and venues and to get the gigs and make sure I'm the person that's set apart and all of this kind of stuff. That's where all of this started for me. Now, a warning here, before I tell you more about musicians in a circle, I have to warn you that because what I'm about to show you this offer is an it's really an insane, insanely low cost to you. And you, you'll see what I mean in a minute, but it's a really, really, really insanely low cost. Registration for this is only going to be open for a really, really short time. And then the registration will close and the pricing that is being offered here in this video won't ever be offered again. Now, this is important because somebody asked me earlier about will the replay of this video is going to, will it stay up? Yes, it will for a while. But it really is. I'm going to have to shut this down because, again, this offer that I'm about to show you, it's, it's such a low cost. I can't offer it to so, you know, so many people. So I, it's just this is just not going to be economical for me. And it's not going to allow me to give the most value that I can to people. So I'm only going to be able to offer it to, here for a certain amount of time. But again, we're going into a new year. I want to give as much value as I can. I want people to be able to get in on this. And I want I, I never want money to be like this hindering thing of like, well, people can't get in, can't get the information and the knowledge and stuff that they need. But again, so that's something I really want you to understand about this, that because it's such an insanely low cost is it's not going to be offered for long at all. So by now you're probably thinking that this, what I'm talking about is it's amazing offer. It sounds cool. It sounds great, but I really thought long and hard about how I could make this thing even better for you and give you the, most value that I can. And I came up with not one, but two really, really amazing bonuses. And each of these bonuses would easily be more than triple the cost, more than triple the cost of what you're, what the investment for musicians in a circle is. So the first bonus is you're going to get free lifetime access to my marketing for musicians course. Now, my marketing for musicians course is all about helping you market yourself or your band in today's music industry. In this course, you're going to learn about social media marketing and the key areas musicians should focus on to maximize sales and get more gigs. And the normal price for this course goes for $97, but you get it for free if you become a part of musicians in a circle today. Now, the second bonus that you're going to get is you're going to get a free 15 minute consultation with me. And this is only going to be for the first 20 people that join us in Musicians in a Circle today. Now, listen, listen, listen. This consultation is where you're going to get specific advice about your career and get personalized, a personalized action plan for your next steps in doing music full time or just really maximizing your profits from gigs if that's what you want to do. So what we do is we jump on a Zoom call and hash it out, all of the things that you want to hash out. So my in-person consultation started at $400, you know, upfront or upfront cost for $400 just starting. And they usually go up from that. The vast majority of them are more costly than that. But again, you, you'll get this free today as a part of becoming a member of Musicians in a Circle. Now, one of the things about my consultations is Again, this is uh, this is this is stuff that I don't promote often because I, I don't have to. I don't really need to. I tell people about it when I need to tell people about it or when they need something from me. I say, hey, I offer consultations and they're able to come in. And this is a, a, 
I I never so forgive me for this. I never get a chance to flex on stuff. So I don't I don't do a lot of flexing and, and bragging all like that kind of stuff. But it is the my consultations with people have been extremely valuable for them. This is what they tell me. This is not me saying this about myself. It's really been extremely valuable for them. So I just wanted to put that out there for you. And I'd mentioned earlier about getting help. This is a way that you can get specific tailored advice for you in your situation. So that's going to be one of the bonuses or the second bonuses that you get as becoming a part of musicians in a circle. Now the bonus values that I just mentioned, if so, if you add them all up together alone, you're already at $497. You're at a value of $497 alone. So just adding up those two things, if I, you just pay for those out front, that's what you would have to pay for them. And that's crazy, right? But by now you're probably wondering what is the cost of musicians in a circle? I talked about it being an insanely low cost and all of that kind of stuff. So Terrence, how much is it? Like, let me get in on this thing. <laughs> how much is it? What is this insanely low cost that you're talking about? Well, my friends, your investment in musicians in a circle is just $37 a month. That's it. $37 a month. So you're talking about just over $1 per day. You're getting all of this value for just over $1 per day. Now, remember, if you want to become a full time musician, you want to get in on this creator economy thing, you want to get higher paying gigs, get yourself out there, get notarized, get all of this kind of stuff. You got to take action. This is what it really comes down to. You got to take action. I just talked about that. You got to think about how your life would be different if you commit to growing and learning and connecting with other musicians and, and getting the information that you need and setting yourself up for, for success, you know, building that strong foundation so that you get to the success easier. Just think about how your life would be different if you commit to doing that and taking action on that. <clears throat> so here's what you're going to do now. This is what I want you to do now. This is going to be really important. I'm, I'm going to put a link in the chat where you can sign up for Musicians in a Circle today. And you'll see all of the things that are part of Musicians in a Circle right now. You there's over there's over 30 hours of training in Musicians in a Circle right now. Over 30 hours on everything that you want to know, how to talk to people about gigs, how to find your niche, how to dominate social media. How there's trainings pretty much on every subject at this point, marketing, there's a lot of stuff on marketing because marketing is important. And that's what you're going to get when you become a part of musicians in a circle today. Now, one thing I wanted to tell you about this is I'm offering you this low value. A lot of people didn't get in on this offer and they're paying more for musicians in a circle right now. So you kind of, you kind of getting lucky on this thing. Now, one last thing I need to mention that this again is a limited offer registration for this price will only be offered for a very short period and very short time. And once it's closed, this pricing will likely never be offered again. So if you want to get in on it, you need to act very quickly. Now, again, I'm going to go ahead and drop this link in the chat right now so that you guys can have it. And again, this is this is your opportunity to take action. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go over here to my chat. Drop this in here right now and you can see the sign up page. Just dropped it in there. Um, and you guys can see what's going on. And again here, guys, you can hang with me for a while. I'm going to we're going to do some Q&A here. Like so a lot of you can get your questions answered here as well. So I, I wanted to offer that value as well. But that link just dropped. So that's it's there for you. That's you see how it's working. All right. Now. Now, like I said, if you you really want to get in on this now, but if you miss out on this, you know, don't freak out. Don't don't feel any pressure or anything right now. I, I never want to put pressure on people. The odds are pretty good that I'll offer another chance to get in on music musicians in a circle in the future another time. But again, the price will definitely be much higher. And you you won't get these bonuses. This is like the perfect opportunity now to get in, get, get in on this. So, again, uh, if you're ready to take your music career to the next level, then your next step is to click that link in the chat 
and join us in Musicians in a Circle today. Now, something else I wanted to mention here is that there's no risk here to you. Really no risk at all. If any point you join Musicians in a Circle today, and if any point, at any point, literally, that you determine it's not right for you, you can stop your monthly payments and then rejoin whenever you feel like it. When the new price, you know, you know, rejoin at the new price, it'll again probably be higher when you join, but that option is there for you. So there's no risk of you, to you. You don't have any pressure on you or anything like that. And guess what? Because I'm, again, about giving as much value as I can, you get to keep the bonuses that I mentioned. So if you sign up for Musicians in a Circle, you find out, you know, a few months from now that it's not right for you or whenever you you may come to that decision, which I, I don't believe you will because of the value that you're getting in it. But if that's the case for you, it's no hard feelings. You get to keep the bonus that I told you about. You get to keep the the marketing for musicians course, one of my most popular courses that people find a lot of value in. You get to keep that. You Of course, you've gotten a consultation if you're one of the 20 people that sign up, the first 20 people that sign up. So it's really no risk to you. Now, just a final note on this. I'm not I want to be clear about this. I'm not some fly by night musical magician who can give you the world. I, I really want you to understand that that's not the picture I'm painting to you here. This is simple. I simply stumbled up onto a discovery about how to be successful in the music industry some years ago that has become the basis for my success and others that I coach and others that I just see all the time, their success in the music industry and in this creator economy. And, you know, really since then, I've continually worked on it, refining it and adding to it and perfecting it. And the result of which is the reason for Musicians in a Circle. That's why I created it. I, I wanted to put out this information in Musicians in a Circle, this refined information as, as I'm getting it, as I'm putting it out and have it for available for musicians. And I wanted to be able to share all of this information with you. So again, if you're ready to take your next step in your music career, and you're ready to take it to the next level, then your next step is to click that link in the chat and join us in musicians in a circle right now. Now this is your time. It, it's time to step up. It's time to take action. There's never been a better time. My friends, it's never been a better time. But again, you have to act now because registration is closing soon. So now's the time to act. Go ahead and join us in uh, Musicians in a Circle today and say yes to achieving your dreams as a band, musician, or artist. So yeah, that, that opportunity is there for you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here. We've been <laughs> going at it for almost two hours here. And I wanna jump over here to the chat while you guys are jumping. I see, oh my goodness, let me, hold on. So I'm seeing a, a lot of you guys here have jumped in on that offer already. Wow. So uh, let me see if I can. So the names are not coming up here. I wanted to shout you guys out, but let me see if the names are going to come up for me. Uh, they'll pop up in a minute. So I'll, I'll shout you guys out. But right now we have. Oh, wow. So we're almost to that 20. Guys, we have. Hold on. Let me see. Make sure I'm telling you right. Four, so we, yeah, we have four more guys. We, if you want to get in on that uh, free consultation, we have four more spots for that available. So you, you only have a chance to get four more of those spots. So yeah, just throwing that out to, there to you. So make sure you get in on that. So if you guys have any questions, shoot them out to me. Anything about this creator economy, anything about, uh, you know, uh, the music industry about getting get anything you guys want to know. I'm here. We can talk for the chat for the next few minutes and, you know, really just go in on this thing and, and get your questions answered. So I'll go up and read a few of the comments that you guys here now uh, are saying, let me see. So I read those earlier when you asked about the replay. So just saw this, um, <laughs> David Carter is saying, I just joined, uh, what did I miss recap? Yeah. Go back and watch it from the beginning, man. We, we gave a lot of value. Here's a lot of stuff that you, <laughs> a lot of stuff that you miss. Um, let me see. I found, I finding a big challenge with copyright and doing cover songs on YouTube. Let me, t let me speak to that. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, Oliver. Let me, let me tell you something about that. Here's the thing guys. This is one of the biggest questions that I get a, a lot about 
copyright and stuff like that on YouTube. Here's the thing. This, this is the way to do it. You don't really need to worry about it. And I'm going to tell you why. So all of the artists that I showed you now, well, let me backtrack on that. It's not that you don't need to worry about it. It's just that whatever, it depends on what your goals are. So let me explain it like this. So all of the artists that I showed you, including myself on these social media platforms earlier, they're doing cover music. And of course they're getting copyright uh, challenges and all of that kind of stuff too. But it doesn't matter. Here's what happened. Let me see if I can go to the back end. Let me see if I can show you this. Um, I'll go to my YouTube studio on this music channel of mine that I just showed you a while ago. Go to content. Okay. So yeah, let me show you guys this really quickly. Uh, make sure this is my screen right coming up. Okay. So on this page, so you see here, this is something that I've gotten on this channel too. So copyright thing here on a few of these copyright, copyright, copyright on a few of these videos, quite a few of these videos that I put out, you have some copyright issues on the copyright strikes. So some restrictions and all that kind of stuff, right? It's an issue with doing cover songs because you can't legally do other people's cover songs. And here's the key. You can't legally do them and make money off of them. That is the biggest thing you can upload whatever you want to upload to YouTube. You can take the copyright strike, but what will happen here is if the only way that this affects you is if you're concerned about making money off this music. Now there's a legal way to do this. You can, what you need to do is go on to a site called harryfox.com. And I don't know if many of you musicians know about that, but you should, if you don't. And what you need to do is, get a mechanical license to release these songs that you're doing as cover songs. And then you won't get copyright strikes from them because you have a license for them yourself. Now, Harry Fox is too, is one of many sites that does mechanical licenses for stuff like this. So you want to get in on that. I don't want to get too far into that, but that's a way around it. But the reason I was saying that you don't need to worry about this is because what you can do is so like this channel, if I just wanted to focus on getting my follower count up, uh, on this channel and get it to a certain amount of subscribers, I could get those videos off my channel and then start, uh, doing more cover songs and stuff like that. Again, giving my audience, still giving my audience value, giving more of my original songs, rather stuff like that, that won't get copywritten and get them in on that. But I already got the, at that point, I already got the following. So I can, I can take those hits that the, the, basically the drawback for the copyright thing on YouTube and other platforms is that you won't be able to, those videos that where I talked about AdSense and all of that, you won't be able to get AdSense from those videos because it's copyrighted material. So that's an income stream that'll be closed off for you, but you still have the other ones available to you. All of the ones that we mentioned in this training. So that's one of the ways that you can get around that. Um, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, what else do we have? Let's see. Let me go back over here to my comment section. Um, was your gear? Uh, Angela was asking, was my gig from last night a solo gig? No, it was what it actually wasn't. It was, was with my band. I have a, a eight piece band that we did that gig with uh, last night. So yeah, you, you can do the <laughs> new numbers on that yourself. But I did a, so, so the, my last solo gig that I'm not, I'm not going to say, cause it, again, it, it always makes me feel uncomfortable when I'm, and it feels like I'm bragging about something and I'm telling you, Oh, I make this amount. I, I really hate, you know, it's just not my thing. Um, uh, but most of my solo gigs, I'll, I'll just say do really well. I'll, I'll just say it like that. Um, so, uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, I'm using, we are the hits to do cover songs on my YouTube channel. Yeah. I know about we are the hits as well. That's a, that's a good, um, good avenue to use cover songs in there. So, um, Robert saying, hello, enjoying the great info. Thanks, Rob. Thanks. Appreciate you. The man. So Miko saying that's my go-to, uh, full-time musician. Yeah, it is for a lot of us. A lot of us want that full-time status. And it, again, it's, it's available to a lot of us. It's not something that's just, um, you know, foreign and that we can't, we can't, um, we can't achieve. It's, 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 something that's really available to most of us in, in some form or fashion. I'm not going to say that everybody out here is going to make, you know, you, you're going to become a millionaire. It's, that's a sort of exclusive club a little bit. And you, to get there, it takes a lot, 
But just to make a full time living where you can live comfortably. That's available to most of us musicians and artists and bands. So uh, just saying, what's up? What's up, man? Uh, you may have to you may have to be good. Don't you have to be engaging? Angela saying, that's a good question. You don't have to be good, but don't you have to be engaging? That's a really good question, Angela. I would say that it's a it's a complicated answer. If you want the short answer, I would say yes. But what I mean by that is engaging. It, it's such a broad term and it means something different in so many different ways that a lot of people think this engaging means, oh, I got to be like, you know, turning flips and I got to be so interesting and all of that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't want to paint that picture. Engaging means something different to different people. And this is why the creator economy is so good for a lot of people. Um, you don't have to be engaging in terms of like, you know, again, being the person that turns all the flips and being the most jovial and all of that kind of stuff. What the engagement is, is really about the value. So let's say, let's say you have, um, I don't know, you have a, a splitting headache. You don't know how to solve your headache and you want to, or you keep getting these headaches and you don't know how to solve them. And you come to YouTube for an answer on how to solve headaches. And you come across a video in your feed that says, how to solve recurring splitting headaches. First of all, I already got your attention if that's my video, because I'm I'm already speaking to a problem that you have. So now when you click on my video and I start by saying, so you've been having splitting headaches and you, you begin by, you know, they, they kind of slow down your day. I'm speaking to your situation. They slow down your day. They're doing this particular thing. And, you know, you want to know how to get rid of them. There's a five step process that I'm going to reveal to you in this video, how to get rid of them. Okay. First thing you need to do is do this. I don't know. Let me just name. You need to drink water. You need to drink eight cups of water a day or whatever. And then you need to start doing this. If I'm doing that for you, I don't have, there's, I could literally sit up here and say, and, and do this, tell you this information like this. The first thing you have to do is you have to drink eight cups of water per day. Second thing you have to do is you have to lay down and you need to sleep and you need to make sure you get some rest. Third thing you have to do is you need to de-stress. So you need to take a hot bath or something like that. No way am I being what's typically called engaging, but I guarantee you, you're going to watch my full video because I'm solving an issue for you. And I'm, I'm being valuable to you by solving an issue for you. So now you see what I mean? So this, the whole engaging thing is it can be misleading. Again, the short answer is yes. You, if you don't have that sort of, that's an extreme example. If I'm not solving a direct problem for you or something like that, and you just come across my video and you say, Oh, this, this looks like a good piano player, a good guitar player, whatever. Let me check out this video. If you click on my video and I'm just like, uh, what is me? And, uh, yeah, you probably need to be a little bit more engaging than that. But again, that's a long way of explaining like engagement is not like this, this one dimensional thing. It means different things in different contexts. So hope that you hope you understood that. Uh, Oliver saying great channel channels. Love the content. Thank really helpful. Thank you, man. I, thank you, Oliver. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, Octavia saying, thanks so much for sharing Terrence. This, this is very informative. I came across your channel at the time I was thinking about sharing, starting a YouTube channel, but didn't know how to get go about it. Yeah. That's the case with a lot of us, Octavia. I, I run across a lot of musicians and stuff that are, that are like that, that don't know how to do it. And I can tell everybody that's out there. That's wondering the answer to that question. There is no magic answer. The answer is start. Terrence, I want to get in shape. How do I start? Put the bag of potato chips down. Get a gym membership. This, this stuff is not rocket science. Terrence, I want to stop you know, spending so much money or I, I want to start saving more money. How do I start? Stop going on Amazon and buy stuff every day. It's not this, this, the stuff that we're talking about is, it's not rocket science. It's simple. You literally set up your camera, you start a lot of people listen to what I'm saying here. This is, this is one of the most valuable things I think I'm going to say about this question and what happens with a lot of people. A lot of people are afraid of, the process. 
a lot of people because a lot of people have been sold on this overnight success this is why i was careful in this this presentation that we've done here to not you know spread this overnight success thing like oh this is how you be successful tomorrow no this is a lot of people get afraid of the process and they get sold on the 30 day hey lose 100 pounds in 30 days get the woman or man of your dreams in the next two weeks a lot of people get sold on this short process and that's just not the thing when you understand that all you need to that the whole what's the the adage or the the sort of pr proverb sort of thing that the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step terrence how do i travel a thousand miles take the first just take a step that's getting you further towards that goal so the, the answer to your question about how to start and how to go about doing it and i know you didn't ask that question directly but i know this is a question that a lot of people have you just do it you start you set up your camera you record something don't worry about the views that your first few things that you put out is not going to get a lot of attention it's just not that's just the way that it's going to work your first time in the gym you're not going to lose 100 pounds the first day you're there you're, you're not going to even lose a few ounces probably your your first time trying to save money you may mess up you may go on amazon and buy something but you're starting the process it's about starting guys this is this is why i talk about taking action so many people sit back and 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 analyze the process. Oh, what do I need to do? How do I do this? Just just start. All of that stuff is going to come to you as you start the process. As you start showing up at the gym, you're going to learn about the equipment in the gym as you go. You're going to see people doing it and then you're going to get on the machine or the weights and say, oh, that's how you do this. This is how you do this. You're going to keep that process going. Oh, this is how you run. This is how you do a proper sit up, proper jumping jack. Let me copy these people. Let me do it this way. This is how this works. That is the process, but you, that you never get to that unless you start. So I, I, this is one of my my things, guys. Just start. I don't mean I'm not going to go in a rant on that too much, but so you just start. So, uh, yeah, that's sort of the answer to your question, Octavia, the question that you kind of didn't answer, but kind of or asked, but kind of did. All right. So um, Sam is saying this is a powerful life training tra training. Thank you, uh, Sam, so much for saying that, man. Uh, really appreciate all the value you have blessed us with for free. God bless you. Thank you, man. Thank you. And same to you. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, when I hear that, that that makes me makes my day a whole lot better. I always want what I'm doing to be valued to people. And, you know, is and just be that giving person and, and give as much as I can, as I started by saying at the beginning of this. Um. Uh, Trinae sent, uh, Trinae, I hope that's, I'm saying your name, right? Uh, Terrence, thanks for all that you do. Just signed up. Excited. Thanks, Trinae. Yeah, I think you, I, I'll go back over here to my numbers in a minute. I'm trying to keep my eye off it. I don't, I don't like to, wh whoever joins, whoever decides to take up the opportunities, who's going to decide. I'm, you see, I haven't even said anything about it anymore. Uh, cause again, I'm, I just don't, I don't want to push anybody into it. it. It may not be time for some people, you know, that's just the way that it works. So. Uh, thanks again for Trinae for shining up. So Daniel said hello from Paris, from Paris. Thank you for all your great advices. Um, it's my pleasure, man. And thank you for, for being here, for saying that, uh, Frank is saying, I started recording videos as a hobby four years ago and turned it into a thing quickly. Long story short, I'm a full-time musician as a result of it. And I don't play for, <laughs> for a church. Yeah. I get that reference, man. I know, know you kind of talk about one, a couple of my videos. Um, uh, but yeah, man, that's, that's, that's amazing. So you see, this is a success story right here, guys in the chat, Frank is saying he started recording videos as a hobby four years ago and turned it into a thing. And it quickly became a <laughs> full, he quickly became a full-time musician. Crazy, right? This, this is, this is the type of, this is the power of this creator economy thing that we're talking about. This is what people can do with it. So yeah, guys, again, um, that's gonna be up. I'll, let me go over here and look at the numbers quickly. I'm sure that tw that first 20 has gone by. Let me see. By the way, if you guys were one of that first 20, I, I, I have a thing here that's gonna show me who was in that first 20. So if you were one of those first 20 people to get that, again, and you will get that free um, consultation and you'll you'll get an email about that. So you you'll be notified about that, by the way. So, but let me check. Oh yeah, we're okay. We are well past. <laughs> yeah, we're well past that twenty. So I tell you what, guys. So here's here's what I'll do. 
before we log off. Um, wait, let me not put my foot in my mouth. Let me make sure I can do this. Tell you what, if, um, what time is it? I'll, I'll give this about another three minutes. And if 10, the next 10 people will go ahead and, and sign up and join us in musicians in a circle, I'll extend that, um, I'll extend that free cons consultation to the next 10 that sign up as well. Let me s make sure I set this up and put myself a note in here so I make sure I do that correctly. Um, okay. Okay, so I can do that for the next 10 people over the next five minutes. The, the clock's ticking on that, guys, if you want to get in. Again, I'm just, I'm trying to give as much value as I can here and, and you know, make this as valuable as I can for you all. So, again, thank you all so, so much for being here. We've been going for a whole two hours. <clears throat> My mouth is dry now from talking so much. <laughs> but, again, thank you guys so much for being here. It's, it's been a pleasure to... <clears throat> to serve you guys and, and have you here watching with me and present this information to you. So thank you so much for being here. Um, yeah, I'm going to let that run now. You got about eight and a half minutes. So to do that, I'll, um, if you guys don't have any more questions, we'll go ahead and log off, man. I don't want to keep you guys. I got some stuff to do today. I have some more rehearsals and stuff to do for gigs. I got this weekend. It's like I said, it's a crazy year. It's been extremely busy for me. Um, if you guys too, you want to follow me on Instagram, you should, I put a lot of the like behind the scenes and stuff of my shows and all that kind of stuff on my Instagram story. So if you guys are interested in all that kind of stuff, you guys want, might want to follow me on Instagram It's at Terrence Fisher one. So I'll put, let me put that in the chat. Let me see at Terrence Fisher one. That's my, um, Instagram. Am I, is that my TikTok too? No, I think I'm at on TikTok. I'm. T fish, the musician. I think that's what my TikTok is, but Instagram is where I show a lot of stuff. So if you guys are just interested in kind of seeing how some of that stuff works and the types of gigs I play for and stuff behind the scenes, I share a lot of that stuff on my Instagram story. So, um, yeah, you should guys should check me out over there. So thank you guys again so much for being here. All of you, uh, all of you saying thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Oliver. Thank you all so much for being here again. Octavia, Trey, Sam, Miko. I said, Oliver, Zach, um, let me see who else did I miss? Miss uh, Mason Gray or Mr. Mason Gray, rather. David. Uh, so many more of you. Angela. Let me see. Wild Horse Music. Uh, Rob. So many other. Joseph. A lot of you guys are here. Thank you so much for being here. I know you guys being here. This is. Uh, I, I don't take for granted your time and 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 you know there was a million other videos here on YouTube that probably showed up in your feed today that you could have been watching, other than mine. But you did decide to click on mine and watch it and i hope it was valuable to you and i hope you got a lot of value out of it so again thank you so much again go ahead guys and take action on that link it's up in the chat you got a couple more minutes a few more minutes now to get in on that i got let me check it We've gotten uh so yeah we got five more we got five more spots for that um for that 10 if you want to sign up so go ahead and do that now and uh guys that's it we'll see you in the next time but again check out keep checking out the videos on the on the channel thank you guys so much for watching those um how you can help us here on musicians in a circle is just when you're watching the videos make sure you watch them all the way through make sure you give them a like make sure if you're not subscribed to the channel that you do that matter of fact go do that now if you're not subscribed to the channel please go ahead and hit that subscribe button now um because as more of that stuff comes in it helps the channel grow and helps me put out more valuable content it helps me put a lot more focus on this I, I have big plans for music space in the in the future bringing some more knowledgeable people than myself on to to give you guys some valuable information and share some really behind the scenes secret stuff including the people who mentor me and who i talk to and all of those people so all of that will help when you're subscribed and all of that kind of stuff. So thank you guys so much. Uh, Telefunken uh, saying thanks. Thank you for being here so much. All right. So that's going to be a wrap, guys. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Hope you have a wonderful week and a wonderful rest of the month. We are, what is today, the day before Halloween, if you're here in the States. So have a happy and safe Halloween. Please stay safe over the holidays. If we don't get a chance to talk 
face to face like this again before the holidays, the major holidays and stuff come up. Please, 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 please stay safe. I, I hate hearing about things that happens to, you know, our community and the musicians and all this kind of stuff during this time of year. So please, please don't drink and drive. Don't do any of that crazy stuff. Stay safe out there. And that's a wrap, guys. So I'll see you guys on the next uh, stream and talk soon.